A few months ago in my house in Bombay, I live in Bombay right now, um, as I collected groceries from the delivery guy at my door, and I was just walking to my kitchen. And suddenly, in the short span, I realized that, hang on a minute, I'm actually living the life of an actor. You know, a dream that I had seen when I was tiny. And it was just a banal moment, right? I mean, one of those moments that you don't really give heed to. But at that point, I realized that my entire life, the last 30 years, have come down to this moment. So, sometimes, the most important things are the little ones that seem most insignificant. Instances that hold the concept of time and give you the realization that your journey in that one split second. Like opening the door and accepting the groceries in the middle of reading a really important script or walking the red carpet in a big glamorous gown, but actually always trying to hide these stones in my rings that my mother instructed me to do. Or being at a swanky premiere of my film and only having my eyes on my mother amongst all these other big stars. It's always about the journey and never about the destination. We've heard that before, right? Sometimes we all need to take a minute, stop, Breathe and think. A minute to realize that being alive is the biggest gift. A minute to realize that sometimes it's okay to not have an idol. Sometimes a minute to realize that heroes are born from within. A minute to realize that today is the tomorrow that we prayed for yesterday. A minute to realize that inspiration can be found in just one minute. My journey, of course, has been longer than just a minute, much longer, in fact. To talk about it is like reliving it. And when I sort of relive it today amongst you, with you all, uh, I'm not doing it to change your life in any way or, or um, inspire you like nothing ever has. I am only sharing those moments where I made these decisions that actually drove me here today and where I am in life. Uh, most people credit their successes to their dreams. You know, I just feel that it's, it's actually probably better to sleep than have a dream without hunger. Hunger is, has been my driver. This insatiable hunger that sort of drove me to those decisions that felt rash sometimes, but never regretful. Let me begin by telling you uh, my first tryst with acting. And no, it wasn't my debut film. So I was uh, put in a daycare center or a creche uh, when I was two. My parents were working parents, and they thought this was the best way somebody could take care of me. So every morning, my uncle would go drop me. Yeah, that's how I looked back then, um, with the same, almost the same haircut. But um, my uncle would go drop me at the, at the creche every morning in this S19 bus. I, I have vivid memories because it was pretty traumatic. And I would, every day, without fail, pretend to be asleep or act to be asleep, hoping that he would actually not leave me there and bring me back home instead. But without fail, he would just hand me over to the nanny and crib that, oh, this girl goes off to sleep every day and actually never brought me back home. But I was relentless, okay? And now I realize that that was probably the first instance where I was acting to survive. I'm a natural. A big reason of becoming an actor was actually the slide now, was to feature in this, Jina Isi Ka Naam Hai, hosted by Farooq Sheikh, uh, the wonderful Farooq Sheikh. Most of you might not even know the program because you're too young. Uh, but, uh, but unfortunately, this dream will never be met because Farooq Saab is no more. But you know, funnily enough, I uh, learned much later when I was studying at FTIR that I had, in my, from my acting badge in FTIR, there were other peers who also dreamt of becoming an actor and got inspired just to be featuring in this program. So it's, it's quite bizarre how, how a generation is influenced by certain things or programs or people. Like, you know, I believe that Shah Rukh Khan is the single biggest driving force and inspiration for most people of our generation to become actors who land up in Bombay every single day. 
So it's weird how, you know, how so many passionate trees sort of grow from one seed. Today, uh, I can say that show business is serious business. Yeah, there's a lot of money riding. Uh, I have been actually very, very fortunate and touch wood uh, to have past participated in a perfect mix of, uh, you know, of, of different kind of mediums and genres of films and acting from doing professional theatre uh, to doing short films like Leeches, uh, that's, that's been doing really well in festival circuits, um, Call Waiting, Bunny, to, to independent films like Margarita with a Straw, Parched, Tathagat, uh, to these really big budget commercial films like Fan or, uh, or Bar Bar Dekho or Jagga Jasus that I'm still shooting for, uh, to actually being the voice of Apple in India for all their success ads. So most people think we actors actually continue to live in the same way off screen, dressed in French linen, sipping on Chilean wine, even after the director said cut, you know. The bubble is going to burst uh, in the next few minutes. The struggle or challenges of being an actor are real and they keep changing. Like life is really full of paradoxes, yeah. For instance, last to last year, I had my premiere of Margarita with a Straw in, um, in Bombay and I was dressed exactly like this in this big designer gown, high heels, all ready to walk the red carpet. Yeah? When I realized that I actually don't have enough money in my bank account to take a cab to South Bombay for my premiere. So I literally had to borrow 500 bucks from my friend to go attend my own premiere. Um, the thing is, you know, uh, it, is, it is not difficult to make money. There are, there's a plethora of opportunities. But what is important is never to compromise on the quality of work you do, irrespective of how big the money is, you know. So, and, and it's, it's a constant thin, thing that we all grapple with, especially people from performing arts. An actor's job is to actually make most of the harsh reality around us and inculcate the same into a scene. So we are just a mere tool. The medium is of utmost importance. Acting is just not about looking great. That profession is called modeling. Um, acting is much more. Acting is literally the labor of bearing your face and your mind and your body and your soul for millions to come and judge you. And acting is also being someone else till you can't find yourself. And it's a constant process. Like my teacher Nasir Din Shah used to say, it only takes 30 years, only 30 years, for you to even become an actor. So yeah, I have 25 years more. One evening, uh, Shanu Sharma, who is uh, the biggest casting director and star maker, literally, she's the one behind Ranveer Singh, Anushka Sharma, Parinthi Chopra, all these stars today who you see, uh, in a friendly conversation, she, sh she said, you know, I really like your work, but babe, uh, you won't be able to be a Yashraj girl. So, had it been anybody else, maybe he would have really gotten heartbroken and gone back and started drinking and become an alcoholic. But I, was, I really took it in my jest. And eight months down the line, she's the one who cast me for fan. And she's actually very proud of me. Um, so people change their opinions. It's not Bible, right? When I was cast for Margarita with a Straw, um, after a month-long grueling audition process, the industry insiders sort of told me, are you mad? It's a blunder. Please don't do this. Your first big film cannot be a lesbian part. Yeah? So, and I know a lot of other people who had actually said no to the part, and I'm immensely grateful to them. Uh, but what their fear was, and it's a pertinent fear, that I would get typecasted, or worse, that I'd never find work ever again after that. Clearly, that's not happened, right? So, we are actually in the true age of, um, of, of these preconceived notions that are constantly being broken. And honestly, I thank my stars that I didn't come into the industry in the 90s. I wouldn't have survived. You know, This is the right age and day to be part of the industry because everything is proper. Um, it is here also that I sort of found my niche and I realized my purpose. My biggest strength, although, has been that I've been content and happy with who I am, the way I look, the way I talk, the way I am, the way I sit, the way I eat. And you know, in our profession especially, there is no end to vanity, right? So there is no end to wanting that perfect face 
even after like 100 botched up lip jobs or boob jobs. It's, there is no end to it, right? And nobody really deserves to go through that process or, or go through that pain of, of being this other person and trying to constantly be this other person. There is so much comparison. So the only thing that you can do is tell yourself, boss, this is it. You have to deal with this. And the rest of the world has to deal with it. The paradox here is that actors are actually expected to be these pretty shiny things in their perfect crystal bubbles, you know? But the reality is far removed from that. Uh, we all fart. Reality, in fact, is the realization of how insignificant we are. I lost my father in an accident uh, where he was coming out of Haldirams. That's my father. Uh, he was coming out of Haldiram's holding two big brown paper bags full of namkeens and a bike came and hit him. So my father was an artist and uh, he and I really had a very, it, it, he was more of a friend than a father and we often discussed life and death and uh, he sort of in, enthused that spirit in me that don't take life too seriously because you know what, just live for the moment, don't think so much. And so my father worked for All India Radio and as part of the ritual before we, we could take him to the crematorium uh, We had to take him to the office, right? So we are there and people are coming and paying their homage and everything But the flower hasn't still arrived now We didn't really care about the flower at that point But the office insisted that it would just madam it would just take a few minutes Please wait. We must give him some flower before he hits the pile. Yeah, so uh, So now the funny thing is that I was standing there and waiting for half an hour and I realized that my father was not the most punctual man. He made all these people wait all his life. So right before he would go and hit his pyre, they were making him wait. And I realized that's the circle of life. Everything that goes around comes around. And so, you know, this, with this realization, and it had already been 24 hours, I cremated him, came back to my house. And as I entered, the house was still smelling of fresh ghee from those namkeens that he had bought last night. And I realized that this man who had bought the food was no more. And the food is still smelling of fresh ghee. That's how insignificant we are as humans. And the only respite, really, is to ensure that we make every breath count. I'm sorry, I don't mean to make it really dark and unhappy, but you know, that's when I learned to stop, breathe, and absorb. Wherever I go, wherever I stay, uh, the, the great part of being an actor is I get to travel for free everywhere, and I get to meet incredible people with incredible stories, um, and which is the constant fodder for life, yeah? The biggest, the biggest aspect of being an actor is the constant change and the shuffling. We are, we are from here to there, we're constantly shuffling. Uh, from cities to characters to colleagues to even lives. Yeah, sometimes you're, you get into this delirium where you don't know which is you and which is the character that you're playing. Uh, my first real shuffle was uh, when I moved to Delhi from Calcutta, uh, away from Calcutta, uh, away because of various reasons, you know. I wanted to sort of get away from, from this, this world where decisions were forced upon you, you know? When everyone else, like your, your family, your family friends, your relatives, of course your parents, also your neighbor auntie, would just give you advice and want to pave your life. Well, I just wanted to be free. I wanted freedom and not suggestions. Freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of intention, right? I've always believed that higher the risks, the bigger the gain. And I was actually ready to take that risk. My initial purpose of coming to Delhi was doing a bachelor's degree in history uh, at, at Lady Shriram College. Uh, so far, the most enabling and enriching uh, experience of my life. It was actually the first time I felt that I belonged. It was the first time I felt independent, I felt responsible for my own decisions, and I realized that my politics and my worldview were as relevant. I, although spent most of my day at auditoriums and uh, lower foyers dancing and doing theater, I got completely consu consumed in, in expanding my faculties. Uh, I learned 
right there that I needed to believe I can and then I would be able to. It's that simple. You just have to believe in yourself. I always wanted to be a performer. You know, I dreamt of being an actor. But consciously, I could never voice it. Even if I uttered the word, it was blasphemous in my middle class Bengali household. I never knew where to start from and didn't know exactly what to do. But almost as a stroke of luck, my roommate came and asked me, do you want to sort of um, fill up the FTI entrance form? FTI is the Film and Television Institute in Pune, which is actually the third most, like, third most um, institute in, in the ranking uh, out of all film schools in the world. The decision to pursue acting was bigger and riskier than I thought it would be. Mom was dead against it. Um, I took the admission anyway because I had the money, and I sort of hoped deep down inside that she would come around. Well, it was a really long battle, uh, fighting relatives and family, uh, just, to try, just trying to justify that why would I give up a perfectly successful career in order to go study that to films. They believed that that's not what girls did from respectable families. My mother equated acting and prostitution in the same breath and threatened to kill herself if I went ahead with it. Well, here is my mother, right after the premiere of Margarita with a straw, right after she saw her daughter making out with another woman on big screen in a film auditorium. Yeah, and she's still smiling. So she did come around 360 degrees. Today, my insecurity, although is, that I might lose that hunger at some point in life. You know, my father was way more talented than I ever was, and, but he still lacked the drive. And he was just happy making music and doing his own thing, but he had no ambition. And I fear falling into his trap. Suddenly, I have too much to lose. Suddenly, I have too much at stake. But I just have a feeling that my father is looking at me from up there and smiling because I left a career behind to leave behind a legacy just like he would have. Thank you.